Continue our reading from the Beyond Bird deck. And I think we have read from the first chapter of the book. We talk about the soul and we are not the body. And um, today we will continue from chapter number two. Just give me a second while I get into it. And this chapter is titled Elevation at Death. There are different kinds of transcendentalists who are called yogis, hat yogis, gyan yogis, dhyan yogis, and bhakti yogis. And all of them are eligible to be transferred to the spiritual world. The word yoga means to link up and the yoga systems are meant to enable us to link with the transcendental world. As mentioned in the previous chapter, originally we are all connected to the Supreme Lord, but now we have been affected by material contamination. The process is that we have to return to the spiritual world and that process of linking up is called yoga. Another meaning of the word yoga is plus. At the present moment, we are minus God or minus the Supreme. When we add Krishna or God to our lives, this human form of life becomes perfect. At the time of death, we have to finish that process of perfection. During our lifetime, we have to practice the method of approaching that perfection so that at the time of death, when we have to give up this material body, that perfection can be realized. Fixes his life self in remembering the Supreme Lord will certainly attain to the eight verse number 10. Just as a student studies a subject for four or five years and then takes his examination and receives a degree, similarly with the subject of life, if we practice during our lives for the examination at the time of death, and if we pass the examination, then we are transferred to the spiritual world. Our whole life is examined at the time of death. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tachyatam te kalevaram tam tam evati konteya sada tad bhav bhavita. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fear. Gita 8.6. There's a Bengali proverb that says that whatever one does for perfection will be tested at the time of his death. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes what one should do when giving up the body. For the Dhyan Yoga meditator, Sri Krishna speaks the following verses. Astito yoga dharanam. Persons learned in the yogas who utter omkara and who are gate sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. The yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head. One establishes himself in yoga. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. In the yoga system, this process is called pratyahara, which means that just the opposite. Although during life the eyes are seen in, engaged in seeing worldly beauties, at death one has to retract his senses. from their objects and see the beauty within. Similarly, the ears are accustomed to hearing so many sounds in the world, but at the moment of death, one has to hear the transcendental omkara from within. Om iti ekaksharam brahma vyaharan maam anusmaran yat prayati tyajandeham sayati paramam gatin. After being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable om, 
the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse number 13. In this way, all the senses have to be stopped in their external activities and concentrated on the form of Vishnu. Vishnu Murti, the form of God. The mind is very turbulent, but it has to be fixed on the heart, in, uh, fixed on the Lord in the heart. When the mind is fixed within the heart and the life air is transferred to the top of the head, one can attain perfection in yoga. At this point, the yogi determines where to go. Beyond this universe, there's a spiritual universe. The yogis have information that these places from Vedic literature, just as one going to America can get some idea what the country is like by reading books. One can also have knowledge of the spiritual planets by reading Vedic literatures. A yogi knows all these descriptions and he can transfer himself to any planet he likes without the help of spaceships. Space travel by mechanical means is not to be accepted process for elevation to other planets. Perhaps with a great deal of time, effort and money, a few men may be able to reach other planets by material means, spaceships, safe suites, etc. But this is a very cumbersome and impractical method. In any case, it is not possible to go beyond the material universe by mechanical means. The generally accepted method for transferal to higher planets is the practice of the meditational yoga system or Gyan yoga. The Bhakti yoga system, however, is not to be practiced for transferal to any material planet for those who are servants of Krishna, the Supreme Lord, are not interested in any planets in this material world because they know that on whatever planet one enters in the material sky, the four principles of birth, death, old age, and disease, and death are present. On higher planets, the duration of life may be longer than on this earth. But death is by material universe, we refer to the old disease and they not try to elevate themselves to any planet within the material world. If one tries to enter higher planets by mechanical means, instant death is a sh But if one attempts to go to higher planets by means of the yoga system, he will acquire a suitable body for entrance. We can see this demonstrated on this earth for we know it is not possible for us to live in the sea, in the watery atmosphere, nor is it possible for aquatics to live on the earth. As we understand that even on this planet, one has to have a particular type of body to live in a particular place. So a particular type of body is required for other planets. On the higher planets, bodies live much longer than on earth. For six months on earth is equal to one day on the higher planets. Thus the Vedas describe that those who live on the higher planets live upwards to 10,000 earth years. Yet despite such a long lifespan, death awaits everyone. Even if one lives 20,000 or 50,000 or even millions of years in the material world, the years are all counted and the death is there. How can we escape this subjugation by death? I'll repeat, how can we escape this subjugation by death? That is the lesson from the Bhagavad Gita. Na jayate mriyate vakadachin nayam bhutva bhavita naya bhuyaha ajo nitya shashvato yam purano na hanyate hanyamane sharire. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death, nor once having been does it ever cease to be. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, undying, and primal. He is not slain when the body is slain. And as such, we know that our such is to be considered intelligent. Those who are Krishna conscious are very intelligent where there is death. They will reject a long duration of life in order to attain a body like God's. Ishvara Parma Krishna Satchidananda Vikraha. Sat means eternal, Chit means full of knowledge, and Ananda means full of pleasure. Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. 
If we transfer ourselves from this body into the spiritual world, either to Krishna Loka, Krishna's planet, or any other spiritual planet, we will receive a similar Satchidana in the body. Thus the aim of those who are in Krishna consciousness is different from those who are trying to promote themselves to higher planets within this material world. The soul, the self or soul of the individual is a minute spiritual spark. The perfection of yoga lies in the transferal of this spiritual spark to the top of the head. Having attained this, the yogi can transfer himself to any planet in the material world according to his desire. If the yogi is curious to know what the moon is like, he can transfer himself there. Or if he's interested in higher planets, he can transfer himself there, just as travelers go to New York, Canada, or other cities on the earth. Wherever one goes on earth, he finds the same visa and custom systems operating. And all material planets, one can similarly see the principles of birth, old age, disease, and death operating. Om iti ekak charam bhamma. At the point of death, the yogi can pronounce Om, Omkara, the concise form of transcendental sound vibration. If the yogi can vibrate this sound and at the same time remember Krishna or Vishnu, Maam Anusmaran, he attains the highest goal. It is the process of yoga to concentrate the mind on Vishnu, the, imp Vishnu. the impersonalists imagine some form of the Supreme Lord, but the personalists do not imagine this they actually see. Whether one imagines him or actually sees him, one has to concentrate his mind on the personal form of Krishna. Ananya chetaha satatam yomam smarati nitya saha tasyaham sulabha partha nitya yuktasya yoginaha. For one who remembers me without deviation, I'm easy to obtain, O son of Pritha, because of this constant service. Those are temporary life, temporary, temporary faces, at least not according to the Bhagavad Gita. And since very small, is interested in temporary things. We are eternal. So why should we be interested in temporary things? No one wants a non-permanent situation. If we are living in an apartment and the landlord asks us to vacate, we are sorry, but we are not sorry if we move into a better apartment. It is our nature because we are permanent. We want a permanent residence. We don't wish to die because in actuality, we are permanent. Nor do we want to grow old or be deceased because these are all external or non-permanent states. Although we are not meant to suffer from fever, Sometimes fever comes and we have to take precautions and remedies to get well again. The four, four miseries are like fever and they are all due to the material body. If we somehow get out of the material body, we can escape the miseries that are integral with it. For the impersonalist to get out of this temporary body, Krishna here advises that they vibrate the syllable Om. In this way, they can be assured of transmigration into the spiritual world. However, Although they may enter the spiritual world, they cannot enter into any of the planets there. They remain outside in the Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma Jyoti may be compared to the sunshine and the spiritual planets may be compared to the sun itself. In the spiritual sky, the impersonalists remain in the effulgence of the Supreme Lord, the Brahma Jyoti. The impersonalists are placed in the Brahma Jyoti as spiritual sparks. And in this way, the Brahma Jyoti is filled with spiritual sparks. This is what is meant by merging into the spiritual existence. It should not be considered that one merges into the Brahma Jyoti in the sense of becoming one with it. The individuality of the spiritual spark is retained, but because the impersonalist does not want to take a personal form, he is found as a spiritual spark in that effulgence. Just as the sunshine is composed of so many atomic particles, so the Brahma Jyoti is also composed of so many spiritual sparks. However, as living entities, we want to enjoy. We want enjoyment. Being in itself is not enough. We want bliss, ananda, as well as being sat. In his entirety, the living entity is composed of three qualities, eternality, knowledge, and bliss. 
those who enter impersonally into the Brahma Jyoti can remain there for some time in full knowledge that they are now merged homogeneously with Brahman. But they cannot have that eternal ananda, bliss, because that part is wanting. One may remain alone in a room for some time and may enjoy himself by reading a book or engaging in some thought, but it is not possible to remain in that room for years and years at a time and certainly not at all for eternity. Therefore, for one who merges impersonally into the existence of the Supreme, there's every chance of falling down again into the material world in order to acquire some association. This is the verdict of Srimad Bhagavatam. Astronauts may travel thousands and thousands of miles, but they do not find rest on some planet. They have to return again to Earth. In any case, rest is, assured, rest is required. In the impersonal form, rest is uncertain. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam says that even after so much endeavor, if the impersonalist enters into the spiritual world and acquires an impersonal form, he returns again into the material world because of neglecting to serve the Supreme Lord in love and devotion. As long as we are here on earth, we must learn to practice to love and serve Krishna, the Supreme Lord. If we learn this, we can enter into those spiritual planets. The impersonalist position in the spiritual world is non-permanent, for out of loneliness, he will attempt to acquire some association. Because he does not associate personally with the Supreme Lord, he has to return again to the world and associate with the conditioned living entities there. It is of utmost importance, therefore, that we know the nature of our constitutional position. We want eternity, complete knowledge, and also pleasure. When we are left alone for a long time in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, we cannot have pleasure. And therefore, we accept the pleasure given by the material world. But in Krishna consciousness, real pleasure is enjoyed. In the material world, it's generally accepted that the highest pleasure is sex. This is a perverted reflection of the sex pleasure in the spiritual world, the pleasure of association with Krishna. But we should not think that the pleasure there is like the sex pleasure in the material world. And no, it is different. But unless sex life is there in the spiritual world, it cannot be reflected here. Here, it is simply a perverted reflection. But the actual life is there in Krishna, who is full of all pleasure. Therefore, the best practice, the best process is to train ourselves now so that at the time of death, we may transfer ourselves to the spiritual uni universe, to Krishna Loka, and there associate with Krishna. In the Brahma Samhita 5.29, Krishna says that his abode are described thus. Chinta mani prakara satmashu kalpa vriksha laksha vriteshu surabhira bipalayantam lakshmi sahasra sata sambrama sevyamanam govindam adi purusham tamaham bhajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval lord, the first progenitor who is tending the cows, fulfilling all desire, in abodes filled with spiritual gems, surrounded by millions of wish-fulfilling trees, always served with great reverence and affection by hundreds and thousands of Lakshmis or gopis. This is a description of Krishna Loka. The houses are made of what is called touchstone. Whatever touchstone touches immediately turns to gold. The trees are wish-fulfilling trees or desire trees, for one can receive them from them whatever one wishes. In this world, we get mangoes from mango tree and apples from apple trees, but there from any tree, one can get whatever he desires. Similarly, the cows are called surabhi and they yield an endless supply of milk. These are descriptions of the spiritual planets found in Vedic scriptures. In this material world, we have become acclimatized to birth, death and all sorts of suffering. Material scientists have discovered many facilities for sense enjoyment and destruction, but they have discovered no solution to the problems of old age, disease, and death. They cannot make any machine that will check death, old age, or disease. We can manufacture something that will accelerate death, but nothing that will stop death. Those who are intelligent, however, are not concerned with the fourfold miseries of the material life, but with elevation to the spiritual planets. One who is continuously in trance, nitya yuktasya yogi naha, does not divert his attention to anything else. He's always situated in trance. 
His mind is always filled with the thought of Krishna without deviation. Ananya chetaha satatam. Satatam refers to anywhere and anytime. In India, I lived in Vrindavan and now I'm in America. But this does not mean that I'm out of Vrindavan because if I think of Krishna always, then I'm always in Vrindavan regardless of the material designation. Krishna consciousness means that one always lives with Krishna on that spiritual planet, Golo Vrindavan, and that one is simply waiting to give up this material body. Smarati Nitya Shaha means continuously remembering. And for one who is continuously remembering Krishna, the Lord becomes Tasyaham Sulabaha, easily purchased. Krishna himself says that he's easily purchased by this bhakti yoga process. That is why we should take, why should we take to any other process? We can chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. 24 hours daily. There are no rules and regulations. One can chant in the street, in the subway, or at his home or office. There is no tax and there is no expense. So why not take it? We'll stop here today and we'll resemble again at a later date. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. And for those of us who are joining, we are going to end the broadcast now. Hare Krishna. Tanvar Pranams.